Hollywood has a good chunk of atrocious martial arts content, but admit it or not, the Karate Kid spin-off series Cobra Kai can't be counted among these atrocities. Since the show first aired in 2018, it's rarely been called out for any technical issues. The cast has been highly appreciated for giving the show their all. This begs the question, are they, by any chance, all trained in karate? Stick around to find out. First up, Mary Mouser. Since she plays one of the main characters, you'd expect the Samantha LaRusso character, Mary Mouser, to be a karate action hero. But it turns out that she didn't practice any karate till the second season. But it turns out that she didn't practice any karate till the second season. She only stepped up her training to deliver in the fourth season when Samantha had to fight in the All Valley Karate Tournament female finals. While speaking at Cobra Kai Live and Badass, Mouser explained how she takes the karate aspect of the show more seriously than the acting. She believes that martial arts do more of the storytelling than the actors do. That being said, to meet her goals for the previous season, Mary also practiced through the weekends. She admitted how it was a lot of work since she was learning the absolute basics, but this rigorous training was also accompanied by Krispy Kreme donuts, which she described as counterintuitive but worth it. Mouser also had a weapon routine alongside her karate routine. Now, while most people would be reluctant about acting with weapons, Mary, on the other hand, labeled it an opportunity that she's grateful for. Funnily enough, during the rehearsals, she stole two of her characters' says. Up next, Zolo Maradueña. The Miguel Diaz character, Zolo Maradueña, may have received a little karate training as a child, but he's admitted to being the least trained of all the cast members. To elaborate, he did a year or two of karate as a kid, but never got into it until he was booked for the show's first season. As a result, compared to boxing and other stunts, it was difficult for him to pull off traditional karate. Fortunately for him, the majority of the action he practices involves boxing. Anyway, even though karate isn't, as he once said in an interview, his lane, the various martial arts on the show has inspired him to try out jujitsu. Not just that, it's also gotten him into watching fights on TV. To quote, I've started to watch the fights on TV and stuff like that, which I really probably wouldn't have done having not booked the show. Coming up, Jacob Bertrand. We don't know about you, but Jacob Bertrand, aka bad boy Eli Moskowitz, having the most amount of karate training under his belt was nothing short of a surprise. Believe it or not, before his appearance on the show, Bertrand trained in karate for four years and grappling for two years. Jacob only quit after becoming a purple belt, if sources are anything to go by. Yep, you heard that right. But before you assume it gave him an added advantage of some kind, think again. He was required to train just as rigorously as everyone else to get into the right shape for his character. In an interview with Crooked Llama, Jacob explained how he had to stretch before the show to execute different kicks. In another interview, he explained that while he struggled to get the choreography right initially, it's only gotten easier with each season. Interestingly, much like Zolo, these choreographies have helped ignite, or rather reignite, his interest in Brazilian jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai. Not just that, while speaking of pop culture, he revealed that since most of the stunt crew is into MMA and UFC, he's also started watching them during the offseason. Following up, Johnny DiCenzo. DiCenzo was another cast member who didn't start practicing karate until the second season, but like his co-star, Jacob Bertrand, he also picked up an additional martial art to help him along the way. Known as Krav Maga, it's an Israeli fighting technique that, despite being quite different from what he does on Cobra Kai, has a bunch of similar kicks and punches. Another reason DiCenzo has gotten into this style is to meet his fitness goals. Speaking of fitness, as the seasons have progressed, he's become used to most of the choreographies that the stunt crew throws at him, which, just by the way, are mostly very last minute since they've so many people to train. But regardless of this hectic schedule, Johnny is thankful that he got to work on the show. Moving on to Tanner Buchanan. Tanner Buchanan is another Cobra Kai actor with some solid combat training behind him. From what we've gathered, Buchanan learned Taekwondo from 10 to 12. We know what you're thinking. It's not that big a deal, especially considering all the other trained stars on the show. But unlike the others, he almost reached the black belt. That's like the supreme honor in the sport. Sadly, Tanner's hectic schedule didn't permit him to continue. But seeing that he was eight months into his Muay Thai training before Cobra Kai rolled around, we're assuming he must have gotten back into the martial arts at some point in his adult life. Coming up next, William Zabka and Ralph Macchio. When they were selected for the original film, Macchio and Zabka had to undergo a five-week karate boot camp with Tong Su Do, master black belt Pat E. Johnson. Since their characters, Daniel LaRusso and Johnny Lawrence were training with different masters in the movie, Johnson had to teach them different styles. Now, when it comes to the spin-off, the two did train like the rest of the cast, but since they're advanced in their years, the training was not as intense as the original. In an interview, Zabka explained how, although back in the day, he'd be able to train every day 
to build up his skills, nowadays he goes back home with a sore body. Similarly, William remembers how bouncing back to his younger days was much easier. They're both entitled to their opinions, but from their performances, it looks like they haven't aged a day. They're still so seamless, not to mention Martin Cove. Since we're on the subject of oldies, let's also quickly talk about an actor who reprised his role for the show. We're talking about none other than Martin Cove, aka John Kreese. For those who didn't know, Cove isn't only an on-screen martial artist. He studied martial arts throughout his life, including everything from Shihan Takkubota and Kendo to Taekwondo. According to a source, he's even earned a black belt in Okinawa Te, a style he used for a film named Steel Justice. We've got you fully covered if you're wondering what led him to learn all these techniques. As far as we know, he picked up Kendo and Taekwondo while preparing for his role as an Irish king in the line of Ireland. Since the character's weapon of choice was an axe, the stunt crew thought practicing Kendo would help improve Ko's prowess. Before you ask, no, these films weren't the end of his stints with martial arts, because during his The Karate Kid period, he also had to train with Pat Johnson. As far as we know, Johnson put Cove through his paces for three hour stints each day during the intense shoot. So, as you guys can see, his famous and enduring presence as an on screen martial artist isn't for anything. He's put in a lot of time to accurately portray a martial arts master. On top of that, Yuji Okamoto, another character from the original films whose return to the spin off series is Yuji Okamoto. Yuji, who knows and continues to practice styles like Chidorayu, Karate, Shotokan, and Judo, is the most highly trained of all the cast members. Even though he's a private person, he picked up these styles from a few of his interviews because of bullying at school and his obsession with kung fu films. As for his sessions with Pat Johnson, he was perhaps the only actor who had to take them for as little as a week. Yeah, figures. Finally, Dallas Dupree. Dallas Dupree, who joined the show in its fourth season, has also had some karate training. But in an interview, he revealed that despite being athletic and having a good muscle memory, he's only able to execute his moves because of the amazing stunt specialists. In the same interview, Dallas came clean and said that while he was excited about training when he was first signed up for the show, his season 5 training gave him the worst groin strain of his life. One that lasted for 8 whole episodes. Ouch. The things actors must go through to keep us entertained, honestly, we could never. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think? Are inaccurate techniques that big of an issue? To what degree do they impact the show's appeal? If yes, let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you at the next one!